the fourth chapter of the first book of The Adventurous Simplicissimus by Hans Jakob Christoph von Grimmelshausen for the LibriVox Coffee Break Collection 10 War and Conflict. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The fourth chapter of the first book of The Adventurous Simplicissimus by Hans Jakob Christoph von Grimmelshausen for the LibriVox Coffee Break Collection 10, War and Conflict. How Simplicissimus' palace was stormed, blundered, and ruinated, and in what sorry fashion the soldiers kept house there. Although it was not my intention to take the peace-loving reader with these troopers to my dad's house and farm, seeing that matters will go ill therein, yet the course of my history demands that I should leave to kind posterity an account of what manner of cruelties were now and again practiced in this our German war. Yea, and moreover testify by my own example that such evils must often have been sent to us by the goodness of Almighty God for our profit. For, gentle reader, who would ever have taught me that there was a God in heaven if these soldiers had not destroyed my dad's house, and by such a deed driven me out among folk who gave me all fitting instruction thereupon. Only a little while before I neither knew nor could fancy to myself that there were any people on earth save only my dad, my mother and me, and the rest of our household. Nor did I know of any human habitation, but that where I daily went out and in. But soon thereafter I understood the way of man's coming into this world, and how they must leave it again. I was only in shape a man, and in name a Christian. For the rest I was but a beast, Yet the Almighty looked upon my innocence with a pitiful eye, and would bring me to a knowledge both of himself and of myself. And although he had a thousand ways to lead me thereto, yet would he doubtless use that one only by which my dad and my mother should be punished, and that for an example to all others by reason of the heathenish upbringing of me. The first thing these troopers did was they stabled their horses, Thereafter each fell to his appointed task, which task was neither more nor less than ruin and destruction. For though some began to slaughter and to boil and to roast, so that it looked as if there should be a merry banquet forward, yet others there were who did but storm through the house above and below stairs. Others stowed together great parcels of cloth and apparel and all manner of household stuff, as if they would set up at frivolous market. All that they had no mind to take with them, they cut in pieces. Some thrust the swords through the hay and straw, as if they had not enough sheep and swine to slaughter. And some shook the feathers out of the beds, and in their stead stuffed in bacon and other dried meat and provisions, as if such were better and softer to sleep upon. Others broke the stuff on the windows, as if they had never-ending summer to promise. Houseware of copper and tin, they beat flat and packed such vessels as bent and spoiled in with the rest. Bedsteads, tables, chairs, and benches they burned, though there lay many cords of dry wood in the yard. Pots and pipkins must all go to pieces, either because they would eat none but roast flesh, or because the purpose was to make there but a single meal. Our maiden was so handled in the stable that she could not come out, which is a shame to tell of. Our man they laid bound upon the ground, thrust a gag into his mouth, and poured a pail full of filthy water into his body. By this, which they called a Swedish draught, they forced him to lead a party of them to another place where they captured men and beasts, and brought them back to our farm, in which company were my dad, my mother, and our Ursula. And now they began. First to take the flints out of their pistols, and in place of them to jam the peasants' thumbs in, and so to torture the poor rogues as if they had been about the burning of witches. For one of them they had taken, they thrust into the baking oven, and there lit a fire under him, although he had as yet confessed no crime. As for another, they put a cord round his head, and so twisted it tight with a piece of wood that the blood gushed from his mouth and nose and ears. In a word, each had his own device to torture the peasants, and each peasant his several torture. But as it seemed to me then, my dad was the luckiest, for he with a laughing face confessed what others must out with in the midst of pains and miserable lamentations, and such honor without doubt fell to him because he was the householder. 
for they set him before a fire and bound him fast so that he could neither stir hand nor foot and smeared the soles of his feet with wet salt and this they made our old goat lick off and so tickle him that he well nigh burst his sides with laughing and this seemed to me so merry a thing that i must needs laugh with him for the sake of fellowship or because i knew no better in the midst of such laughter he must needs confess all that they would have of him and indeed revealed to them a secret treasure which proved far richer in pearls gold and trinkets than any would have looked for among peasants of the women girls and maidservants whom they took i have not much to say in particular for the soldiers would not have me see how they dealt with them yet this i know that one heard some of them scream most piteously in diverse corners of the house and well i can judge it fared no better with my mother and our whistle than with the rest yet in the midst of all this miserable ruin i held to turn the spit and in the afternoon to give the horses drink in which employer i encountered our maid in the stable who seemed to me wondrously tumbled so that i knew her not but with a weak voice she called to me o oh, lad run away or the troopers will help thee away with them look to it well that thou get hence thou seest in what plight and more she could not say end of the fourth chapter of the first book of the adventurous simplicissimus by hans jakob christoph von grimmelshausen for the librivox coffee break collection ten war and conflict recording by dom bombadil